Listen up. According to CoreLogic, year-over-year -year home price gains will continue to rise for the rest of the year, but are anticipated to rise at a slower pace. We had famed Shark Tank investor and Corcoran Group founder Barbara Corcoran on with us last week, and this is what she had to say about housing prices. I think the prices are going to go through the roof, especially if interest rates come down another point by year end. I think everybody and their mother and their in-laws is going to come out looking for a new house. And the competition is going to be so fierce that house prices will have to go up. Let's bring in Selma Hepp, who is the CoreLogic chief economist, to discuss more. Selma, great to see you. Thanks so much for taking the time here with us today. I, I was looking at this report when it dropped yesterday, and I was absolutely taken away by some of the top pull-apart pull kind of points that you highlighted within this. And I want to start with the U.S. single-family home prices. They increased by about 5.5% year-over-year in February 2024 compared with February 2023. What is the larger trend that we're seeing right now? And you just heard from Barbara Corkin. What does that spell out for perhaps the rest of this year? Um, sure. Well, first of all, thanks so much for having me. Um, so home prices were up 5.5% in February um, and that's actually a smaller increase than we saw in a month before. Hmm. And we will likely uh, continue to see this slowing trend throughout the remainder of the year as we move away from the bottom of home prices in January of 2023. Because we were comparing to that, those low prices at the end of 2022, in, coming into January 2023, uh, home price growth kept accelerating. And now we've reached that peak. Uh, we're pivoting and we're going to see slowing of annual rate of growth. But what was really interesting to me in this February report, too, is that uh, in monthly increase uh, from January to February was exceptionally strong. It was actually up 0.7%, uh, which is almost double the rate that we usually see between these two months, or we at least have prior to the pandemic. So uh, that's telling me that we are off to a really strong start uh, in terms of home prices in 2024. Are there any material differences you're seeing right now with relation to existing homes versus some of the new home builds? Um, so, uh, yes, there is a, a lack of uh, existing uh, supply of homes, uh, which is driving demand towards new homes. Uh, uh, and there's been a greater availability of new homes, particularly in some markets in Southeast and South. And so uh, as a result of a greater availability of supply, we've seen more turnover, more transactions happening in those markets as well. And as a result of that slower rate of home price appreciation, among existing home sales. Um, so particularly when you look at where home sales uh, price growth has been the slowest, it's actually been in some of the markets in Texas where we've seen an influx uh, of new construction. For those buyers who are wading into this market right now and trying to get the best deal possible, at the same time where sellers are trying to make sure that they're realizing the best price, you know, where are you seeing this push and pull? Where are negotiations netting out at? And, and how do we expect that to matriculate as we get into the peak spring buying season as well? Right. So um, as Barbara mentioned in the previous uh, a segment uh, that you were uh, from last week, uh, spring home buying season tends to be more competitive, right? You do see more people coming out as buyers and, and generally it's met by larger supply. What we've seen over the last couple of years is that more buyers come in than sellers, which uh, tends to put pressure on home prices. As a, as a result of that, we've seen such strong home price appreciation. And I think we are already seeing that to some extent this year, uh, just given the rate of home price appreciation that we saw in February. So definitely, uh, again, more competition in the market, which tends to drive uh, um, a, a price bidding on, on homes and, and home price appreciation higher. The core logic forecast, that, that struck my attention. It shows that annual U.S. home price gains will relax to 3.1%. In February 2025, there's there's a good deal of time between now and then. And so what are some of the main catalysts that are going to drive that that relaxation down to that three point one percent that we're tracking towards? 
Well, a lot of that honestly is the base effect. Basically, you're starting to compare spring home uh, home prices this year compared to last year. And last year we had a similar uh, trend where there was a strong influx of demand as mortgage rates came down that was not met by equal supply. So home price appreciation uh, exceeded significantly that that we would have generally seen spring home buying season. So as you start comparing these two on an annual basis, on a year over year basis, Basis, that really drives that uh, slowing of rate growth. But when it comes to monthly gains in home prices, I think, again, we're going to likely see continued uh, strong appreciation going into our next few spring home uh, spring home buying se season. And then those uh, that rate of appreciation slows general, generally in the latter part of the year. You know, Selma, just lastly, while we have you, I wonder, when you hear about the Fed potentially looking at less cuts than expected, coming into this year, how do you fact that that into the, the home market calculus? Right. Unfortunately, uh, less cuts mean higher mortgage rates as well. Uh, and we've already seen that play out in the market. I mean, as soon as mortgage rates increased in 2022, we saw a significant drop in demand. Um, now, what's interesting about this cycle is that we still have more demand than we have supply, so that continues to drive home prices higher. But for many buyers out there, uh, higher mortgage rates basically means that they cannot participate, and especially for first-time home buyers and low, low to moderate income buyers. So, so some buyers, unfortunately, are completely priced out of the market. Selma Hepp, CoreLogic Chief Economist. Selma, thanks so much for taking the time here with us today. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.